Hello, it is Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle today, so perhaps a little bit of a step up in difficulty and perhaps also theme complexity than we've had the last couple of days. I would say Monday and Tuesday were very, very approachable puzzles, which was nice for a Monday or a Tuesday. It might be a bit trickier today, and this potentially trickier edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Jake Rodkin, Michael H., and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous direct support to this channel. I very much appreciate it. And if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get access to the Daily Self Let's Check the Crosses mug, as well as all of the bonus videos that go up on the channel to date, you can find those at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field. And you can also get all of those videos um, by backing the Patreon campaign at any level. And thank you to everybody who has done that. I do very much appreciate it. There's another one of those videos that have gone up today. I've solved the practice puzzle and the first competition puzzle of the Boss Words Summer 2022 competition, which took place this past Sunday, but I wasn't able to participate in real time. So instead, I'm going to be solving its constituent puzzles in batches, I suppose, for the Patreon campaign. They didn't seem... I solved them relatively quickly. They weren't as brutally difficult as the previous boss words competition puzzles I've solved, if you've seen any of those, if you're a patron. I don't know, perhaps they will increase in difficulty as the um, as I progress through the, the list. I suspect that might be the case because the championship puzzle is labeled in such a way that makes it seem very difficult. Anyway, uh, that's that'll be up by the time this video is up. If you're a patron, go check that out. And uh, do subscribe to the channel if you have been enjoying these videos. And I'm going to move on to the puzzle. I know I, I often say this, but it really is true today. I do not have very much time. So let's let's get on with it. This is a Wednesday puzzle constructed by Enrique Henestrosa Anguano, uh, Anguiano. And this is Enrique's third puzzle, I think, for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's get solving. Shoulder muscles in gym lingo. Are those your delts? I think that's the case. A small child, oh, maybe not. Small child. Biochem strand. Yeah, I don't think this is delts, sorry. I guess delts are more, more on your back. So a small child could be, I don't know, a, a tot maybe? Biochem strand I think is RNA. That, that is my suspicion about this. It could be DNA, but I think it's RNA. Um, because it looks like an easier letter here. Oh, traps. The trape trapezius, is it? Shoulder muscles, something like that. I'm not incredibly uh, up on that language, but I think that's the case. Number one in the rankings is on top. How about that? Pinpoint. So this is pin meaning personal identification number, which you would use at an ATM, an automated teller machine, or a cash point. And a snack item on a stick is, hmm, looks like pop something. Clearwater's neighbor across the bay. Ah, so this is this is probably Tampa City, which must be across from Clearwater in Florida, I suppose. So this is pop something, but I'm not sure what. And actress Sissy Sissy Spacek, and Spider Man slings them webs. Presumably as straightforward as that. To represent as a designer at a fashion show. To wear, if you're wearing a given designer, they say. Sharp but appealing quality. Edge? You have edge, that's generally said as a positive thing. Correct copy. To correct, ah, right. So this looks like a noun, but in fact, I think it's a verb. To correct the copy. Copy meaning the text. Um, you'll edit it. And a Twitter icon is... Oh, the bird. Right. Twitter's icon is a, is a little bird. Uh, Twitter, the app. And then command to Fido is stay. Stay is a common dog command. And the Taj Mahal's locale is Agra. There we go. Straightforward enough. A cowardly person. This looks like a scaredy cow. I was going to say cat, but that doesn't fit. Or rather, it, it fits too easily, if anything. Interesting. This will be theme related, I suspect. Here we have bonfire residue, could be ash, and Washington, and Lincoln. 
I mean, is it just that they're both cities? I'm sure they are probably other things as well. I mean, they're both presidents, they're both cities. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's all it is. Let's look down. It has one eye on the TV. And a similar kind is an ilk of similar ilk. What Lao Tzu said is hidden but always present. Uh, I don't know offhand. Interesting. I'll be curious. A villainous person is... Black hat? Oh, right. As in white hats and black hats in the sort of Western film trope language. Oh, it has one eye on TV. CBS. Right. Okay. This is referring to... Uh, CBS is is, a, is one of the... the four, I guess, major television networks in the United States, and it has an eye logo. So there we go. The logo is a literal eye. Scandinavian drinking cry is skull. Oh, Dao is hidden but always present. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then snack. Oh, snack out of one stick is a popsicle. Okay. I don't know why I was making that more difficult than it needed to be, but yes, a, uh, a treat for hot weather. And an ineffectual person, not sure offhand, abbreviation before a name on an envelope. You could put attention, A-T-T-N, on an envelope to indicate the particular uh, recipient intended at a given address. And have some, have some. Try it. Um, meaty bone for a dog is a treat, I suppose. Glace, gloss after melting. Oh, I see. Right. So gloss is, uh, G-L-A-C-E is um, ice cream in French. And so after melting, it would be water, I suppose, which, or no, gloss is ice, I suppose. And then after melting, it would be O. Sorry, not ice cream specifically. Uh, so there we go. O. And then French for star is étoile. So there we go. So we had, that was, that's interesting and sort of surprising. We had two French answers crossing one another. And I think in keeping maybe with the difficulty of each word or the common sort of commonness of each word, this one is, this one was clued in a slightly tricky way, uh, glass after melting. And we have to, in, we have to sort of infer that we're looking for the French word for water. Whereas here, étoile, which I suppose is a less, less commonly used French word in English, perhaps, is simply given French for star, but I'm still surprised there are two crossing one another. Anyway, Broadway star Lupone, Patty Lupone, I've heard of. And I don't know the cowardly person yet. Diarist Nin, a nice Nin. Famously a diarist. I'll come up in crosswords from time to time. Site of the 1998 Winter Olympics. Oh, was it Nagano, Japan? I think it must have been. And called off is next, but that doesn't fit. Uh, imitated could be aped. And millennials by another name are Gen. Is it Gen Y? I think that's, I think that's millennials, of whom I am one. A uh, cowardly person is a. I still just don't see it. Like some markets, open air markets, you could have outdoor market. Non-Jewish would be a uh, Gentile, non-Jew. And a long and perilous journey would be an odyssey. So let's just quickly check these crosses. Called off, oh, I see. Something's been, something has been called off, it's no go. There we go, I'm not surprised I didn't get that for whatever reason. Uh, and then this was Daisy Ridley's role in Star Wars, the character Rey, all right? So there we have that. What's next? Uh, an ineffectual person, right? What is this? An, oh, an empty suit. Oh, sorry. I never, I didn't ever look back at this. So scaredy pants. What is that? Is that actually a phrase? I've never heard scaredy pants. That's yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And then empty suit. So I think that's, I, I guess these must be regular phrases. It's just that they both deal with articles of clothing. We have pants and suit. Anyway, we'll keep, oh, biblical son of Rebecca, uh, Esau. Is that who that is? And then blank Vincent Amour. Um, Omnia 
uh, love triumphs over all, basically. Omnia vincit amor, or vincit, I guess, depending on your preference. Uh, British political VIPs would be PMs, prime ministers. Recurring pattern is uh, recurring pattern is oh, a moire pattern and votes in is why don't I see what this is? Maybe this isn't moire. Oops. Let's see. A traitorous person is a turncoat. And there we go, another bit of clothing, another article of clothing. That, so that, that's our theme for sure. Time's running out sound. Tick tock. And let's just look at these crosses. Anonymous last name is Doe. I think that was in the puzzle yesterday. It's in John Doe. Put a ring on it is to... I would have said wed, but... Uh, it's got to be some other meaning of this. And then a place to get a mud bath is maybe a sty, a pigsty. Date to be wary of the Ides of March. Beware the Ides of March. Uh, the date of Caesar's assassination. And put a ring on it is... Hmm. Eat? Is that... Doesn't seem right. <laughs> oh, your ear. Put a ring on your ear. On your ear. Put an earring on your ear. Okay. Often clues like this that describe rather than define the answer are, um, or rather that, 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 that describe it rather than serving as synonyms or replacements. Often they have an exclamation point at the end, but not this time. Fair enough. A shop with aromas could be a bakery has pleasant smells and box score stat RBI, um, baseball box, I guess. Fictional world entered through a wardrobe is Narnia from the lion, the witch and the wardrobe. And like the Valkyries, our Norse from Norse legend. Big name in outdoor gear would be REI, the um, that's a big American cooperative outdoor store. And south, south of the border, uh, sued for south. Is that it? Freeze over is to ice up and director, no, uh, sore, sore, sorry. I was thinking of French, not Spanish. Okay, so yes, director Kurosawa is Akira Kurosawa, the great director of uh, Ron and Seven Samurai and so on. And then Clean Air Act organization would be the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. And a pompous person is, oh, some, a stuffed shirt maybe? There we go. All right. Got to that one a little more quickly because the theme has already been identified. And purple what? I'm not sure. Egg on is to, oh, I don't know, why don't I see that? Be bold enough to, to dare to, and the two in parentheses means we're going to apply it not just to, to be bold enough, but also to whatever the answer is. So be bold enough to and dare to, and the two is just giving us a bit of extra help to make the, the clue more easily match the answer. And work on glass, perhaps etch maybe you could etch a name into a glass pane on a door i don't know bite at a spanish bar is tapa small small plate tapas bar you could have to oh to spur to egg someone on to spur them to i don't know greater heights or to to ruin perhaps celia known as the queen of salsa i'm guessing celia cruz but i don't know purple oh purple haze there we go the Jimi hendrix song and a roll call response is here. I'm here, I'm present in a roll call. Recurring pattern, ah, right. Not a moire pattern, but a motif, a, a, um, a theme, something that recurs in a piece of music or a piece of literature or film or whatever. Okay, votes in is elects. There we go. That's why I couldn't figure that out because I had that moire in there. It's throwing me off. And to New York City's Mount Sinai Hospital is a, is a hospital in New York, obviously named for Mount Sinai, and it might come in a bottle is, it might come in a bottle, open to the thigh as an evening gown. So slitted, you could have a, a, a slitted dress. 
and heartfelt is genuine. There we go. Traditional garment in West Africa, a kaftan. And that, there we go, it's another garment. It's not part of the theme, but it's it's uh, nodding towards the theme. If you're working hard, you're really at it. And Oscar nominee Rollins. Gina Rollins? I think I've heard that name. I couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you any of their work, unfortunately. Idyllic place would be Eden, the Garden of Eden. And it might come in a bottle is, what is this? It might come in a bottle. I can't even think of any words that fit here. Oh, a message in a bottle. A message in a bottle in the ocean. Right. Sorry. And then Nick's Arena familiar, familiarly MSG. So that's Madison Square Garden in New York City. Is that the? That is. All right. So we've solved the puzzle in uh, relatively quickly. That was, I would say, still on the approachable side for a Wednesday. Hard to know exactly how that stacks up against the last two days puzzle, but I would say that wasn't a, as far as Wednesday puzzles go, I would say that was still on the approachable side. So this has been a relatively approachable week. Good week to introduce somebody to the crosswords. And again, with a very straightforward theme, there was no need to solve, sort of solve the theme itself in order to solve the components of the theme. We had our scaredy pants, our empty suit, and our stuffed shirt, all of which are sort of relatively pejorative um, frames. I wonder, yeah, I guess there probably aren't very many of these sorts of phrases that involve articles of clothing with a positive connotation. Yeah, probably not. I suppose there's something about, yeah. Yeah, for whatever reason, it just seems like those are more more likely to uh, to have uh, have a negative gloss, and I guess so. So scaredy pants. I don't know why that was unfamiliar to me, but it just uh, yeah. That's that, and then empty suit and stuffed shirt, and that's about it. I think that's all there is to say about the theme, as far as I can tell. So it was a nice, simple, straightforward little group of uh, of descriptors that were connected by using articles of clothing, and that's that. So let's move right along to the clues from yesterday's puzzle, which I will attempt to read fairly quickly. Dragon Traces uh, has a bit about Leona Helmsley, the Queen of Mean. That's right. I, I did know that that uh, uh, she was known by that by that name, but I didn't. It didn't come to mind in solving yesterday's puzzle. Whose answer was Leona and. Um, Dragon Traces says she was most famous for her claim that only the little people pay taxes. She eventually was busted for tax evasion and spent something like a year and a half or two years in prison. Additionally, she was well known for not paying contractors. Uh, so yes, indeed. And I, I looked her up um, after reading this comment to remind myself uh, in w what hotels she ran. So she she married, she she herself was, some, was in business and was already a sort of successful business person in her own right. And then she married... Helmsley, whoever, whatever his name was, Helmsley, who was a hotelier. So he developed, I guess, a real estate developer in New York more broadly. And she became highly involved in his hotel business. And the hotel, I think, for which she was maybe most famous for being involved was the um, was the, the Plaza Hotel in New York, which is just still there and has gone through a series of different owners. But yes, she was a, a notoriously... Um, horrible boss, I suppose, and just a difficult person. And uh, yes, as that quotation indicates, had a bit of a uh, bit of um, privilege about her. And then Dragon Traces also points out, to riffle is to page rapidly or to flip through pages rapidly. I most frequently have heard it apply to handling a deck of cards, particularly when done by an expert such as a dealer or stage music magician, though it could certainly be used to describe thumbing through a book, maybe looking through a particular passage, uh, looking for one. And then to rifle, when not being applied to the scoring of a gun barrel, has a connotation of care carelessness or even ill intent, such as theft, possibly, as in to rifle through someone else's papers. So thank you very much for that distinction between the two. So to riffle is to uh, kind of flip through something. It doesn't necessarily have a positive or negative connotation. It's just the action. Whereas to rifle through something really indicates you're um, doing it carelessly or um, 
for some ulterior motive. So thank you very much, Riffle versus Rifle. And then James Andrews and Alan Aton both had that same Riffle Rifle um, distinction. So thank you to, to you as well. And then finally, Kathleen Quinn explains U.S. Route 1, which came up in the puzzle yesterday, stretches about 2,400 miles from the America's First Mile Fort Sign, uh, sorry, Amer America's First Mile Sign in Fort Kent, Maine, on the Canadian border to the Mile Zero marker at the tip of the Florida Keys. The highway traces most of the old Atlantic Highway, the predecessor to U.S. 1, hugging the coast in some states and meandering inland in others. Sometimes it runs through cities and other times is an unpaved surface. Wow. The land consisting of U.S. Highway 1 belongs to the states. And uh, then there's some a really interesting bit. So uh, she mentions President Eisenhower in the 1950s envisioned a plan to establish federal highways crisscrossing the nation, thus establishing the interstate highway system in the U.S. indeed. And then George Steele has a bit about how the highways designated U.S. are not numbered in as orderly a manner as the interstate system is. And then uh, George Steele goes on to have an interesting explanation about how Eisenhower was motivated to create this system so that in the event the U.S. was ever militarily invaded, there would be a kind of well, uh, well-planned and constructed um, network that you know, tanks and convoys can, uh, containing you know, war material and things could could use, which the, the Germans didn't have. And so he was saying, well, if we're caught in that position, we'll, we will have such a thing. So that, that was interesting. I don't think I was aware of that. Anyway, that's that for today's puzzle. And that's that for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle when we will move on to something uh, more complex and certainly more thematically involved. We'll just have to see what's in store for us. I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.